In today's lesson, we're going to be going over how we can use environment object in Swift UI. And it's very similar to the state object or the observed object we were using earlier, but it just makes sharing data a bit easier when you have multiple screens. And let's just go ahead and create an example so that you can implement this in your own project. So the first thing we want to do is create a data class and we're going to assign this the main actor rule. And what the main actor rule does is just tells the program that we want to make sure that whatever happens in here is done on the main thread. So that's essentially what that does. So just remember to add that there whenever you get the chance. And we're going to go ahead and create a data example class. So here it's going to have to conform to the observable object protocol. So go ahead and add that and open a closure. Now inside here, we're going to create two published variables. So add published var text which will be the counter and another one which is going to be used for the counter itself. So that will be set initially to zero and we want to share these values across several different views. Now the point of this environment object is that we can create it in a parent view and all the views inside that parent view are going to be able to access this object and use it accordingly. So the first thing we have to do, which is very similar to creating an observed object, is creating a state object. And we only have to do this once because we need to tell the program that there is this object somewhere in the program. So var and data, which is going to equal the data example. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this block here and create a V stack. And at the bottom of this V stack, we're going to go ahead and add the environment object. And the object is called data. So now all of the views that we insert into the V stack are going to have the access to this environment object. But we haven't really created any views yet. So let's go ahead and do that just to demonstrate that it is working. So let's go ahead and create two other views that can actually share this information over here. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and hold down command plus N. And this will allow us to create a new Swift UI view. And the first one is going to be called sample view and we're going to click on create. Now, the first sample view is going to be very simple and it's just going to display the information we have. And the first thing we have to do is create an environment object and that's going to be called data and it's going to be of type data example. And you should only use this inside a view that has the parent view with the environment object of data. Otherwise the program will crash. So with specifying that, we also have to go down to the preview and tell the preview that we need this object. So environment object, and we're going to insert the data example. And that will make the program happy. Although for the time being, all we see is hello world. So let's go ahead and update that. Inside here, we're going to delete that and we're going to add a backslash call the data dot text. And we also want to go ahead and call the data dot counter. Now, if we actually go back to the content view, we can go ahead and insert this sample view. So we type in sample view, we refresh the program and it's going to appear right there. Of course, we don't have any way to update this counter yet. So let's go ahead and create another view which will allow us to do that. So once again, let's go ahead and hold down command plus N and create a new Swift UI view. Here we will call it text block view and click on create. Now inside here, let's go ahead and create a Z stack. And inside the Z stack, we need to create a rectangle with a frame of 200 and a height of 200. We will give it a foreground color of dot blue, a corner radius of eight. And actually I meant to give the height 60 and we want to insert some text that contains the same text from earlier backslash data dot text. And we did not create this. We have to also add it in here at environment object var data of type data example. And don't forget the preview. The preview is very important if you want your preview to work. So here we go ahead and type in environment object and insert the data example class. Then we continue here slash data dot counter. Then we want to add a foreground color of dot white. And each time the user taps on this counter, we're going to increment the data dot counter by one. 
So as you can see by using this at environment object tag, we were able to transfer the data into this view and also into the sample view so that we can use it and update the content accordingly. Now if we go back to our content view where we actually created the first one, the at state object, we can go ahead and insert the text block view and click on resume. Now we will have a counter and another counter. And if we click on live preview, we can go ahead and tap on this button and it's going to update both of them because both of them are linked to the same class, which means if we make a change in this counter over here, it's going to update this one. Otherwise, it's going to do the opposite and it's going to keep everything up to date. And a good reason to use at environment object over at observed object is that we do not have to do those endless linking because as you may recall with at observed object, we need to create the same state object, but then we need to pass it down in a long chain, which means we would have to add the data inside here and it's going to have to be added to the next view and the next view so on. But with an environment object, we can just go ahead and create our view and say that, you know, it's in the environment. We created it in the parent view so that we can transfer it down to this view. And if we create another view inside here, we can even add it inside there. We don't have to add it in this view. It just has to be a child view to the content view or whatever view you call the parent. It has to be inside this tag so that the program knows to look for it. But that's actually all it takes to create an environment object. And that was a very simple use case, but I really hope that helped. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.